If you've worked with MIDI instruments before or software instruments, you have definitely come up against this and maybe didn't know what to Google. You have a long note, maybe over a few bars, you put your play marker in the middle, you hit space bar, what happens? Literally nothing, nothing plays. Here is how you fix that so that your MIDI notes will play back no matter where you start from. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be a really quick tip today, something called MIDI Chase, an excellent feature within Logic Pro and some other doors that will help fix this common occurrence for MIDI. Working with MIDI instruments is literally a must have for pretty much any kind of composer, any kind of producer, you're gonna be working with MIDI instruments all the time. However, MIDI does have some downsides. It's quite good and it's really, really useful, but it does have a few downsides. One of these things is playback. It's a little bit tricky to work with. So normally when you add in MIDI notes or you're playing in MIDI notes, there is a start point to that MIDI note. And as the play head goes over it, it starts playing the note. And when the note ends, it stops playing the note. Fairly simple, right? Sometimes though you have a really long held note. And if you start that playback in the middle of it and you hit Base bar and away you go, nothing happens. The reason for this is the playhead hasn't actually passed over the start of the note. So therefore the note has not started. So it doesn't play anything because the note isn't there according to the door. It simply missed the start of the note. So it's not gonna play any of it. Now, when you're trying to mix or you're trying to hear what the song sounds like and you wanna start at the middle or start at a different point other than the beginning, this can leave your song sounding a little bit empty which is a little bit hard to mix if you're trying to do that. You might hit spacebar in the middle and wonder why all the drones have disappeared. However, there's a really quick thing called MIDI chase that if you turn it on, that'll fix that problem. But here we go, here's how it works. So taking a look at this session, if I open this up, this is just a very simple instrument line from a wonderful library by Evolution Series. It's called the Bode Colors Cello. It's, oh, it's, it's beautiful. It has this rebode sound, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, if I play from the beginning, you'll hear the notes being added. It's got these rebode sounds. It sounds like a cello orchestra in a way. Absolutely gorgeous sound. I did a review if you want to check it out on these sounds because they're absolutely wonderful, linked below and above. But now let me put the playhead in the middle of some of those notes and hit space and you'll see what I mean. If I start the playback from say here and hit space bar, the only note that played was the very last one. All of the notes that were here didn't play because my playhead, when I clicked on it here, the start of each one of these notes had already been missed. So none of these notes played. It only played this note once the play had reached that point. Now, if I wanna hear them all together so that when I hit play, no matter where I am, I always hear the notes, this is gonna be a little bit of a bummer for you. But with MIDI Chase, we just quickly turn that one on, problem solved. So head up to Logic Pro, up to File, jump into Project Settings and jump into MIDI. Now in here are a lot of different useful controls, but we're gonna jump over to Chase. Essentially what MIDI Chase does is it kind of is logic looking back over what it's doing and chasing up those MIDI notes to be able to play them. Normally a software instrument is playing back a sample when that note is hit. All we need it to do is play back that sample even if the note has already been started. Whatever is under the playhead, gets played. And we simply just turn on with Chase Features Notes. Very easy. So let me close that here and let's start from the same position. You'll see what I mean. Right there, you could hear all four notes immediately started as soon as I hit play and then the fifth one played as well. So all of them were overlapping and playing together. Really wonderful. Now, potentially you would have heard there would be a little bit of a difference in the way that that sounded. All of those samples started at the beginning, but this library is playing back a more complex sample than just a single held sustained note. It's playing back a sample that rebows. Essentially, that's a technique on the cello where we're playing the bow in one direction and then rebow and head in the other direction and making that change very obvious. It's a wonderful sound, but if you look at the piano roll down here, each of these samples is starting at a slightly staggered rate. That way I'm getting different overlapping bowed textures that are irregular and one sort of 
sample finishes up as the next one starts. When I played it all at once and had all of them come in together, they all started at the start of their sample, which meant that it sounded a little bit off. It was too intense because all of them were playing at the same volume at the same time. Another example of this might be say percussion or piano. You might have a crash cymbal and that crash cymbal note, that MIDI note might be four beats long. If you play from say beat three, it's actually going to crash the note. It's not going to know that beat three should be the note hanging on, that it should start halfway through the sample or anything. It's just going to start the sample again. So what do you do in those situations where you've got some sample libraries that are nice when they, you know, have the MIDI chase on and some sample libraries that would just be better if they don't have MIDI chase. Like this one that we have here, it, it would actually be better if it didn't do MIDI chase and it just ignored missed ones and it just picked up from wherever it was. Here's a little trick for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on something called no transpose. It's over here under the track menu. I'm just going to hit no transpose and then hit play from the same spot and see what happens. Would you look at that? It sounds like it's gone back to having no MIDI chase at all. Now the reason for this is I've got it set up in a particular way. Let's jump back to file, project settings, MIDI, and across to the chase settings. I have this checkbox unchecked. It's saying that in the no transpose tracks, which I've just turned this track into a no transpose track, it won't chase the MIDI notes because I haven't got this checked it will only do it in sustained tracks, which is what it was before I checked the no transpose. If I turn this one on, however, then it would still chase them. But it's better to leave that one off. That way, on any piano file, on any percussion file, anything that you don't want the notes all starting together at once, you can set the track to no transpose and the MIDI chase won't chase them, which is very important. Imagine a piano roll where you went boo doo 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 and then you started shortly after each of those notes had started. All it's gonna do is take all eight notes and go bang all at once. <laughs> this is not what you want. So instead you put no transpose on and it will ignore that track. It won't chase those notes. But any of those long sustained drone notes that you have that start at the beginning of the track and don't give up till halfway through the track, they will because you have MIDI chase on. A very useful trick, maybe something that you want to start using yourself. So there's just a quick logic tip for you today, but there are plenty more on this channel for you and plenty more on the way. So do consider subscribing, but otherwise I will catch you in the next one.